Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top seven reasons why your gas dryer doesn't shut off. Stick around till the end of the video for an important dryer safety tip that most people don't even know about. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the gas valve at the wall. The main reason your dryer may not be shutting off during the auto dry cycle is restricted airflow. This is usually caused by the exhaust being kinked or clogged or dirty lint screen. This could cause the heat to build up near the heat source, cycling the heat on and off improperly. If that happens, the timer may not advance to the end of the cycle. Make sure to clean your exhaust and make sure the outside vent hood is working properly. Also make sure that the lint screen isn't damaged, rusted, or clogged up with lint. It needs to be cleaned after every load to ensure proper airflow. The next thing we're going to check is the timer. It controls the functions of the dryer. The timer is a set of contacts operated by one or more cams and driven by the timer motor. If the contacts are fused together, the dryer may not shut off at the end of the cycle. If the motor has failed, the dryer will run, but the timer won't advance to the end of the cycle to shut the dryer off. To make sure the part can carry an electric current, we need to test it with a multimeter for continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. To see if the motor has failed, unplug the wires and touch a probe to each one. If you get a reading, the motor is fine and you can check the timer itself. Because there are so many different timers out there and the terminals can vary greatly, you'll have to consult your wiring diagram to see which terminals to test in order to see if the contacts inside have failed. If any part of the timer is bad, you'll need to replace it. If you need to order a part, simply go to appliancepartspros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Now we need to look at the start switch. It's the button you push to start the dryer. If the dryer won't stop at the end of the cycle and the timer keeps advancing, it could be that the switch has failed. If it fails this way, it usually means the contacts inside have fused together. To test it, open the dryer door during a cycle. The dryer should stop, then close the door. And if the dryer starts again automatically, it means the switch is bad and needs to be replaced. If your dryer has an auto dry feature, the next thing we're going to check is the moisture sensor. The moisture sensor tells the dryer how wet the clothes are and adjusts the drying time as needed. If the dryer won't shut off, it could be that the electrodes have a short between them, causing the dryer to think the clothes are still wet. It can be located on the back of the dryer on the bulkhead or in the front on the lint screen housing. In order for it to work, the sensor must be clean, the dryer must be level, and there has to be enough wet clothes inside the dryer so that they hit the sensor. Whether you have a control board or a timer, the first thing you should do is inspect the moisture sensor assembly. If either the bars or the housing are damaged, you'll need to replace it. But if not, you might just have to clean them with some rubbing alcohol. If your dryer gave you an error code, you'll have to get the tech sheet and put it into diagnostic mode and follow the troubleshooting steps. If it doesn't have a diagnostic mode and you've already tried cleaning the electrodes, then you'll have to test the sensor for continuity. When you test the sensor, it should not have continuity. But if it's shorted out, it will have continuity, even though there's no wet clothes touching the electrodes. If that's the case, it'll need to be replaced. Next, we're going to look at the dryness control board. It's what sends power to the timer motor in the auto dry settings. If your timer motor and moisture sensor are working properly, but the dryer won't shut off when using the auto dry settings and the timer's not advancing, it could be that the board has failed. When this happens, the power is not sent to the timer motor and the timer won't advance to shut off the dryer. These boards are used in many different types of dryers. If your dryer has a diagnostic mode, you can use the tech sheet to see if there's an error code related to the board. Otherwise, if the timer motor and moisture sensor are working properly, but the timer won't advance in the auto dry settings, it's likely that the board has failed and will need to be replaced. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. Next is the cycling thermostat. It regulates the temperature inside the dryer by cycling the heat on and off. The cycling thermostats are usually rated in between 135 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This particular one is rated at 155 degrees. In the auto dry modes, when the cycling thermostat gets up to temperature, 
It sends power to the timer motor so the timer will advance. When it fails, the timer won't advance to the end of the cycle to shut the dryer off. It's usually located on the blower housing, but on some models, it can be located by the heat source. To test it, we need to remove it from the dryer. Once it's out, we're going to attach the multimeter probes to the terminals. It should have continuity. Then we're going to heat it up a little bit past its rated temperature and see if it breaks continuity to make sure it's working properly. You can use anything to heat it up. We're going to use a blow dryer and as it heats up, we'll read the temperature with a thermometer. As you're heating it up, you want to go slow so that the inside of the thermoset has time to come up to the correct temperature, otherwise you might get a bad reading. You want to make sure that it doesn't break continuity before the rated temperature. Once you get past the rated temperature, check the meter again to make sure that there's no longer continuity. If the thermostat loses continuity before the rated temperature, it'll need to be replaced. Next, we need to check the gas valve solenoids. They would open up the gas valve and allow the gas to flow. If the solenoids are failing or have failed, the dryer might not get hot enough to trip the cycling thermostat. That means in auto dry mode, power would not be sent to the timer motor, which would prevent the timer from advancing to the end of the cycle to shut the dryer off. The solenoids are part of the burner assembly. They're located on top of the gas valve. One of the symptoms of the solenoids going bad is that they'll quit working after one or two heat cycles, increasing the drying time until they fail. Once they fail, you'll notice the igniter glowing on and off, but there won't be any flame. The solenoids can be tricky to test because they can have continuity, but still be bad. So we're going to set our meter to ohms. Our meter automatically detects whatever ohms reading is coming in, but you may need to set yours up to read at least 2,000 ohms of resistance. Now you can unplug the wiring harnesses. This type of solenoid is used on a lot of dryers. If yours is different or if you're not sure, you can always look at your wiring diagram to get your specific ohm reading. For the two terminal solenoid, touch a probe to each terminal and check the reading. It should read between 1000 and 1300 ohms. On the three terminal solenoid, you'll need to put a probe on the left terminal, which is common, and one on the middle one. This one should read between 13 and 1400 ohms. Then keep the probe on the left terminal and touch the other one to the right terminal. This one should read between 500 and 600 ohms. If any of your readings are off or one of the solenoids has no continuity, you'll need to replace them both. Now here's that safety tip we promised you earlier. Dryers cause thousands of house fires every year. Most of these are caused by a buildup of lint. Lint and dust have a tendency to build up inside the dryer and vent and are the first things to ignite. Make sure your lint screen isn't missing or damaged, or will let lint into the vent hose. Also make sure you clean it after every load. If you have the flexible style ducting, it's recommended that you upgrade to the rigid metal kind to prevent lint buildup and the duct from accidentally being crushed. Make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions when installing new venting. Failing to clean the dryer is the number one cause of these fires. So make sure to clean the inside of the dryer, including the lint screen and blower housings, the ducting from the back of the dryer to the wall, and from the wall all the way to the outside of the house at least once a year. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in and turn the gas back on. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.